welcome to the University of Finley Art and Culture Show. I am your host, Sharenda, and today we are welcoming on set Mayor Christina Muir, and welcome to the set. Thank you for having me. You are welcome, and thank you for coming out. There's, this is a crazy, chaotic time right now <laughs> for the world. It is. Uh, but it's also, there's some concerns here within Hancock County and the city of Finley with the COVID-19 virus. And I know that the leadership of both Hancock County and the city are doing an excellent job of working together and trying to pull resources and be more on the prepared side, so on the proactive, so that we don't have to be as reactive to catastrophe. Yeah. And thank you for that, and thank the rest of the leaders of Hancock County and the city. But wanted to talk with you this morning about where are we as a county it's we're in day 18 and uh, of the the governor asking for some very specific things to take place in the state of ohio and hancock county has very willingly accepted the requests as well as some of the orders that have come down where do we stand as a community right now with what is being expected of us as individual citizens? Yeah, so certainly, thanks for bringing up that everybody's really been working well together. We are in a great position as a community. Everyone has really stepped up to the plate with taking the orders coming from the governor seriously, you know, even when it first came out of, you know, recommending limiting groups of 100. Obviously, there was a lot of events canceled, a which lot. was painful mm -hmm. to watch, mm -hmm. but those key things on you know limiting interactions, washing hands, covering coughs, all those different items have a huge impact. And so we're starting to see that. And the governor shared, you know, earlier this week, kind of the new projections um, and how we are helping limit, you know, flattening that curve, mm -hmm, as mm -hmm. they say. So we're we're in a really good spot. And we're we're working together, continue to address it, and we'll just kind of continue to see where it goes. And so with where we're at right now as a state and as a local community, we're being asked that only essential workers report to work. Mm -hmm. We're being asked to stay home mm -hmm. uh, unless we need to get to uh, a grocery or there is an emergency or the workplace, it's essential for us to be there. Yeah. Uh, but then in addition to that, um, have some other policies just changed within this week that our viewers may not be aware of or maybe they're exhausted listening to it so they've just turned it off for a while yeah that is it is challenging for sure when you're we're just being inundated with mm -hmm. it and i think mm -hmm. it's good for people to take that step back certainly we need to every once in a while um, the big things right now have really been looking at um, child care facilities mm -hmm. and allowing those really just for health care workers mm -hmm. so now that we have taken those steps to help kind of you know, be prepared on the front end to help mitigate. Now we're into the response portion where we're starting to see people, you know, showing up in the hospitals with COVID. And, you know, some people may just have minor symptoms and they just need to stay home, stay away from other people, keep their family isolated for a while. Um, other folks, it's gonna be more severe and so we need to take that seriously and reach out. There haven't been a whole lot of changes in the policies this week. I think, you know, we're pretty tight at this point. Hopefully it doesn't get you know too much stricter um, based off of the actions we've taken, but you know we kind of just are continuing to monitor it and, and react as we need to. So one of the things that has been in part of the addresses because uh, Governor DeWine's done a wonderful job of every day around two two fifteen, he and his team are right there to give us information and updates. One of the things that I noticed in yesterday's address by the doctor was that. Um, you know, you may see two cases right now, but those two cases have touched a lot of people and it may be 14 days before symptoms and full blown illness right. comes on. But then also some people are carriers and they'll never show, right. but they're still transferring it to others. Uh, so her point was that as a state, we could be up to, right now, a community may have 4,000, but by May 30th, that four could triple or quadruple in how many people are being ill. So with the proactive side, 
our hospital is a private hospital. Mm -hmm. And so are they taking action in the proactive with, of course, the hopes that we won't need it, but are they uh, preparing wards for people where it's specifically COVID-19 right now? Or what does that look like on the local level? Yeah, so we definitely have been, you know, from Hancock Public Health, the hospital, myself, a, a variety of other agencies have really been working and looking at this and monitoring it for weeks prior to even this becoming kind of uh, an emergent situation mm -hmm. locally. Um, so the hospital has really been stepping up, making sure that they're you know, ready to uh, adjust their wards and their beds to be able to be better equipped for the COVID patients. Uh, additionally, obviously, you know, elective surgeries were canceled, some mm -hmm. of those different things mm -hmm. to make sure we have the appropriate protective equipment and supplies to be able to address. So our hospital, our community has been very well prepared. We're fortunate, um, you know, and this is one of those things that people don't think about, um, but, you know, our emergency response, uh, you know, emergency management agency at Hancock Public Health, they have plans for pandemics. Um, that's something that they, they put together, they have a process in place, and they hope they never have to use it. Mm -hmm. But here we are, that's why we plan, that's why we prepare, that's why we do these scenarios, they get together and do tabletop exercises talking through that, so we know if worst case scenario happens, this is what happens, and here's who needs to be at the table for those decisions. Wonderful, and I'm sure that with part of those tabletops scenarios are, okay, this is the scenario, and then somebody who's leading that says, oh, scenario just changed, so it's not just yeah. one way to do it, so that flexibility is already built in for a response. Yeah, definitely. You know, a lot of times we think of disasters in communities as, as natural disasters, mm -hmm. but these public health crises are sometimes more challenging to manage because it's not just a, hey, it went through and now we're cleaning up. Mm -hmm. It's this long drawn out process where you, you have to really manage your resources. You need to manage expectations. You need to communicate frequently. Um, and I think our community is doing a really great job. I'm proud of the citizens in being engaged and overall pretty positive mm -hmm. and willing to, mm -hmm. to work with us. And I would just ask you know, that people continue to do that because um, we may be working through this for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Well, and back to the community, they're, they are doing their do due diligence to try and work from home and mm -hmm. now they're homeschooling and yeah. there's different things that are immediate transitions and people have been very flexible. Yeah. But the other thing that I've noticed within our community that I I love, and we know this about living in Finley, is how the community is coming together to make birthdays special for children that yeah. we're gonna have a party, and now they're doing the drive-by mm -hmm. uh, parades with signs and yeah. tossing little gifts out to them, and yeah. then the bear hunts, and yeah. now there's a, an Easter egg hunt that's being planned, and I know that different neighborhoods are doing those also, yeah. but ways to engage, so this isn't super scary for the children. Right. We're keeping them healthy. Uh, they understand that things are a lot different. They're yeah. missing teachers. They're missing that that touch point with their dear friends. But I love that the community is coming together and trying to brainstorm and, and help yeah. families so that it's not as scary as it could be for our children. Right, yeah. And, you know, it's, for, it's been great to see that and everybody kind of stepping up and getting creative. Mm -hmm. And I think... Re reconnecting on a different level mm -hmm. you know it's been so we're as a culture it's so easy to just be busy and mm -hmm. going and doing and we kind of take things for granted we do and it's you know we connect with people but you're not really connecting and I think this is forcing us to actually like Reconnect. make a call or yeah. do a FaceTime it's not just you know a simple text message hey how are you doing or you know mm -hmm. things like that it's been fun to see folks and you know hopefully the weather is getting nicer and mm -hmm. nicer each day where people can be outside and and have that fresh air and be active um, while being safe right and I know you know the city of Finley and the YMCA have put some little circuit training signs out around our walking paths to try to get people to do even a little more activity and mix sure. it get up the, get the yeah. cardio going get out be active but definitely keeping in mind the social distancing is, is pretty critical right now mm -hmm. And so with that, if we're out and we're on the playground equipment with our kiddos, we need to be taking our, our wipes with us and wiping things down because of the, how long things can stay on metal. Right, so right now we're actually not wanting kids on the playgrounds. playgrounds. So, so those should be off limits. Now you can still be in the parks, you can you know be running around, riding bikes, but you need to keep that separations and not touching surfaces. Okay, and that's, that's a... If people have questions, I know that the state has provided websites and links that people can get information there, but for us locally, 
are they able to go to the health department? Would that be a good place to go online and check things out? What would be a good link for Hancock yeah. County? Yeah, so there's a couple different resources available locally. If you're kind of wanting to see um, just what coronavirus links are available, I would recommend going to finleyohio.com and right on our homepage we have kind of a coronavirus okay. um, resource center and Wonderful. that has both information for businesses as well as citizens and links to a bunch of other sources. So the state coronavirus website, the federal um, you know, CDC, we have a couple of different key items. The Chamber of Commerce has information out there for businesses and some best practices and, and things. Uh, the other thing is if folks are looking for their needing help right now mm -hmm. or they're having a mental health crisis or they have questions about COVID, you can call the Hancock County Resource Call Center and we have that information out across the community. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, so people can get it both online and with their phones. Yes. Uh, so something that has come up in, in conversations is, yes, we're supposed to stay in, but it's okay to go through drive throughs but is it, is it really better if people can stay home and cook and maintain, or do we want people going through those drive throughs Because again, there's so many surfaces and there's exchange of money and exchange of pleasantries, and you're, more, you're closer than six feet apart when right. you're doing that. What, what is the feel there? Yeah, so a lot of businesses are trying to make accommodations okay. with that. Okay. Um, certainly, you know, put using hand sanitizer when you're in your car. Um, so certainly we understand that we can't just have everybody all of a sudden going to the grocery stores. That's going to put some strain, strain. on that. Yeah. Um, so we and want we've people, seen that. Yeah, and we want people to still continue to support businesses as long as possible. That may change at some point, so we need mm -hmm. to support them. What I would say is you need to be extra cautious. Um, you know, trying to keep your distance, um, sanitizing your hand immediately. You know, the workers, I know a lot of them are wearing gloves or masks or different things just to protect themselves. And so when you exchange the money and you pick it up to go, get it home, wash your hands, then eat it. Yep, yes, make sure, you know, that's always a good practice, washing your hands frequently, making sure that you're not touching your face. Um, you know, I know I get in and like sanitize my steering wheel and my cell phone pretty regularly because those are things that I'm touching in between. And they're going to, well, the cell phone's going to a lot of surfaces and we just don't think about right. it because it's so connected yeah. to our surfaces. Yeah, one of the most important things you can do is not touching your face. You know, the reason they're saying six feet is because the way that it's transferred is from somebody coughing or sneezing, those fluids getting on you and you breathing them in. Um, so anytime you can make sure that your face and your mouth, you're not touching and getting those germs in there, that's really the best thing you can do to, to help and protect yourself. Talk. So thank you and thank you. And we look forward to seeing you the next time on the University of Finley Art and Culture Show. Until then, be well.